faces, very different from one another. Belonging to countries which exist far from each other. Reflecting cultures and nationalities, diverse as one possibly can be from the other. Speaking languages, but perhaps not even one word common between one another, year after year, come together in India. Actually, what brought me here is to learn from India their policies, especially policies that is geared towards um, empowering women in rural communities. India has been very successful recently in penetrating international markets. It's uh, dealing with developed and developing countries. So India was an ideal place to, to learn about how to interact in, uh, in policy using the expertise that exists here. A lot of um, a good technical work is being done. We get uh, NDC courses in other countries also, but uh, it's India supposed to be one of the best uh, out of the whole lot. India is worldwide known for its technology. And learning from India is better than learning from US model or OECD model. India model is very suitable for us. There's so much that I didn't know about biotechnology, which was covered by the course. So I'm actually very, very pleased that I attended. It is not only about building infrastructure or capacity building. At any given time, in fields as diverse as embryo transfer technology in goats or solar electrification or communication and information technology or even restoration of rare archival material, competent Indian professionals are engaged in various countries in development cooperation projects as required and desired by the host nation. Indian government tends to recognize our requests in the same spirit as they are with other development partners, although they are also entertaining our requests, but they normally sometimes tend to come with their own agenda, their own development agenda, whatever they perceive. However, collaborating on developmental cooperation projects essentially means helping to build infrastructure, at times from scratch, so that the socio-economic fabric of the country in need is strengthened can play a very important role in the development of Africa, help str strengthen Africa as a whole, and we'll get this crucial effect of economic integration. It is also equally essentially about helping enhance human resource potential through skill development and capacity building. I think it has been, for me, very educational yeah, and inspiring as well. For it is only then that development can truly be sustainable and people truly empowered and enabled. But I hope the lessons that we have gathered will make us closer and forge for the, for, for Mother Earth to be the winner for all of us. By being firmly committed to never give charity, but always extend support, help and cooperation, India has redefined relations amongst nations. A reliable partner from whom we could uh, garner experience because we hadn't been part of, uh, of, the, of the world in this regard was going to be India setting up joint training programs, uh, uh, seeking advice of a partner that could be relied upon given the history of relations and so on. Uh, and so we uh, determined that we should shape solid and reliable relations between ourselves and India. <laughs> Thank you.
It has also perhaps, more importantly, fulfilled a role invested upon her by destiny of being an example, a model for others. We also colonized, they were also, you know, degraded by the, you know, our colonizers. But they grew out of this and they, 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 they're performing quite well. I feel that you're going in the right direction. Things are being done. Uh, there's a lot to be done, like in any other countries, but I feel you're on the right track and that's why we're here to learn from your experience. Definitely we Africans should follow the same model because to be able to move us above poverty level. Roots of this collaborative cooperation can be traced to India's independence movement and the policy of non-alignment adopted thereafter. Perhaps the leaders of India's struggle for independence knew all along that the first and third world are in essence but one world. Yes, when it comes to uh, human uh, feelings, nature uh, and uh, something like that, it's the same. You know, nothing much different, maybe just the color. <laughs> and when poverty, disease or strife exist in any part of the world, peace, development and harmony will be unable to survive in any other part of the world. A self-evident truth, which unfortunately dawned upon the rest of the world much later. And peace came to be recognized as a precursor to prosperity. For the diversity may lie in nationalities, the differences in the details and stamps in passports, but across cultures, human aspirations and dreams remain essentially one. Peace, prosperity, opportunities to fulfill one's potential for a better tomorrow. A truth which revisits hosts in India annually as they encounter eager faces seeking answers on how to tackle a huge backlog of poverty, malnutrition, illiteracy, unemployment and disease. And in listening to that man who was explaining to us how the Terry, the Terry Institution is helping these women, those women in that area to come out of poverty. That touched me well and it remains in my mind. I would like to do that kind of work if I had the mean. For they know India too has walked down the same path to build her own road where none existed and is happy to share experience thus gained. I see India as in two phases, as a developed country and uh, a developing country. They've shown the willingness to share their experience with developing countries and the tendency is that if you see that it's a developing country that is inviting you, it's not like somebody is trying to shove something down your throat. You are almost at pair, a, a pair, so you feel more comfortable. There's not much resistance. As they acquire new skills and observe firsthand how India has solved some of its most endemic problems, it fills them with a new confidence and hope that problems back home, which seem insurmountable, can also be overcome. I work for the Ministry of Planning and Development for the development of the south of Venezuela and we'd like to replicate this experience, learn from what your mistakes, learn from the great things you've managed and then we can try and accomplish it ourselves. However, 
in a world where democracy, freedom, liberty are often but a distant dream, it is India's democracy at work, embedded in myriad folds of its everyday life, which above all else truly inspires them. I believe India has the, the mechanism in place, democracy, a democratic state, to benefit from this diversity. Being a nation that has just recently uh, young in its uh, sense of uh, independence, um, being uh, colonized by a country, by the British, my interest is uh, basically the initiative that has been taken by the Indian people. Uh, drafting their own laws in the aspect that they are better applicable in the situation and how how we have the basicness of democracy of having a constitution each of them returns to their part of the world with an abiding belief in democracy having learned from a nation which against all odds has dared to remain democratic. Here I started to learn uh, the main principles of drafting of uh, India, uh, of Indian legislature, but uh, this will be very important for me. What really makes this collaborative cooperation unique is that unlike grants in aid, it is completely demand-driven. Both countries are developing. It makes it easier because we understand our challenges, we understand um, our difficulties, we understand where it is we need to go, and therefore it's more compatible to fit one into the other. Every project undertaken is a result of an acutely felt and articulated need. Not say so, yes, today's Bahasi are here. It's coming to be very tricky for it. So, the government, the Bharat government, the building, the hostel, the campus, the building, we are very proud of it. Moreover, its every detail is also worked out in close cooperation. Similarly, every course offered, training provided is fully relevant for the participants. It was not like uh, going uh, seeing India and go having fun or a kind of a holiday. More, they really focused on the courses and the contents and tried addressing the uh, current issues we have in the UN or WTO or any other multilateral and bilateral fora. That one it will help us in our country, Sudan, especially during this time after war, we have come to peace and we need to develop. In fact, as socio-economic dynamics change internationally, so does the popularity of courses applied for. It's useful to know about climate change, disarmament, uh, WTO, trade, um, everything. So it's, it's, it's an update for, for, my, for my professional career to have a, a course like this. But there are some courses which seem to be forever in demand. Though most nations consider all matters related to defense taboo for the outside world, India, realizing and understanding the anxieties and vulnerability of these newly independent countries, right from the beginning, opened the doors of its premier defense institutions for serving personnel from these countries to provide training and capacity building. because uh, training, uh, like uh, especially in, in this is very interesting and so many lectures that are very 
I mean, and lectures, lecturers also come, and I have so many experiences in here. But then, that's what friends are for. They help you believe in yourself, in your self-worth and dignity, help you achieve your potential, help you learn how to cope with difficulties and to tide over tough times. Perhaps most importantly, you make a wish and a friend will make all efforts to fulfill it. Articulated needs, be it for sewing machines in Vietnam or for construction of a cricket stadium in Guyana for hosting the World Cup are equally important. As you know, India helped Guyana to build the stadium for a World Cup cricket 2007. It's quite a big stadium. It's perhaps the biggest we have in my country. And um, I must say that we in Guyana were quite grateful for the assistance given by your country in helping us to promote and host World Cup 2007. The stadium remains for us um, one of our masterpieces. In fact, as you go from the airport towards the city, you cannot help, you must see it. But friendships are not only about sharing the good times, they're also about being there for each other when disasters strike. In fact, to help others swim to safety, even when in the deep end yourself, is the hallmark of true friendship and requires great courage. A sentiment capably demonstrated by India when the tsunami waves struck her own shores. While no one can deny the importance in this relationship of sharing of skills, knowledge and technology, of building of infrastructure where none exists, It is, however, this intermingling of cultures, sharing of perceptions, of getting to know what diversity really means, that truly becomes the essence of this collaborative cooperation. Some countries you never even heard of, you've seen the people life and you interacted with them, I think it's worth coming. I am deeply worried at heart for the boy I love so well. My friend wants to snatch from me, <laughs> and I scarcely knew what to do but to hang my head and cry for my baby to die. Oh, that is it! That is it! The simple important thing is that I've made sisters and brothers worldwide. It's such a great opportunity to learn about other countries as well, not just India, but I wouldn't have known, you know, um, you know, things in Mali and Mozambique and in Nigeria, except for, you know, getting first-hand information from the people themselves. Yeah, the yeah. first man, the, in, the Portuguese met in, um, in Mozambique, Mozambique was called uh, Moza Arabic. Moza Arabic. So because they couldn't call the name very well, it became Mozambique. There are some of our alumni who have actually gone back from, from this course and uh, not only have they prog progressed professionally, but they've actually, uh, some of them have gone on to marry their classmates, you know, from here. So that is another level of, you know, international cooperation that is not an expected outcome, but does happen. India brought us all together here. so. The credit goes to India. Otherwise, we, we would have met in some other conferences or said hi, hi or hello, but uh, the relationship would have ended there. It is but obvious that a civilization millennia old would overwhelm with its wealth of sights, sounds, smells, colors, and taste. I came for one, uh, one week, and this encouraged me to come one month. And I said in the beginning, joking, 
I hope this program will encourage me to come for one year. <laughs> but now really, I'm saying this word. I'm ready to stay here in India for one year. <laughs> but with the same staff and with the same group. When I came here, I was a poor man, and now I'm rich. Now that I'm, uh, you know, going back, uh, it's really, you know, my uh, handkerchief was full of tears. <laughs> you see, that says all, you know. And as they discover India, they discover another truth, that multiculturalism, plurality, and diversity need not divide. In reality, when I was coming here, I was full of fears, especially about the food, whether I can be able to accommodate the food over here, but surprisingly, I've enjoyed every part of the food. Oh. And the, the, the literature distributed to us about India, about incredible India. I don't know who coined that word, incredible India. <laughs> There is no doubt that Indian food is really great. We enjoy eating samosas, gazar ka halwa, gulab jamun, uh, Indian sweets, food, chapatis, rotis, butter naan. Everything, is, everything that I saw and everything that I touched, everything that I ate was really, really uh, gave me a pound of pleasure. amazed because I was looking at India from a different perspective but when I arrived into India I, I was just amazed oh the wonderful um, development the, the infrastructure and uh, the people are so nice and um, so accommodating and very educative especially the women if I were not married, I would be looking for an Indian woman because they are so brilliant. Yeah, now I can, I can say that I know India and I am a friend of India and uh, India is, is, is going to be close to my heart because this was a, just such a great experience. Actually, I don't want to leave and I don't want to go back. I am so comfortable here. Baby, <laughs> your name is... <laughs> I will come back with you. Because ultimately, there is only one world which we all share and no one but no one can own. Friendship without barriers where we all have opportunities to know and understand the other is what can ultimately ensure peace and harmony in the world. This time uh, being here I got to see and experience all that diversity, yes. What do you call someone who makes you laugh and then makes you cry when you say goodbye? Someone who enables you to learn and to acquire knowledge. Knowledge which helps you to improve and enhance your life skills. Someone who helps you strengthen the foundations for a better tomorrow. To tide over the tough times empowers you to aspire, dream, and hope. What else but a friend, of course?